So is the new agreement with Turkey a game changer? It's clear that Turkey and the United States are still at odds about how far to take this fight, as Brett McGurk, the U.S. Deputy Special Envoy in the fight against ISIS, told me from the State Department today. Brett McGurk, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. The United States has wanted Turkey to allow you to use in Chirlik to really get into the fight for a long time. How much does what they've agreed with you now affect the fight against ISIS? That's a very significant development because, of course, we're hitting targets in this area. We're hitting targets very close to the Turkish border. Um, often targets that Turkey has asked us to hit, these are ISIL targets that are threatening some of their critical border crossings, uh, but we're, of course, flying from Bahrain or from the Gulf. So to fly out of Turkey, uh, will have a really dramatic impact, and that's why we're quite encouraged to have reached this, uh, this important agreement with them. As you know, the Turks did not come into the fight because the United States didn't agree that the fight should be against Assad as well. Tonight, the Turkish prime minister has told me that they fully are on board with the United States, and you all agree that there should be a fight against Assad as well. Are you on board with that? Well, Christian, I think our position has been very clear that we're all working towards a political transition process in Syria, that there is no military uh, solution to the Syria conflict. I think that is something that we share. Military operations uh, will be against ISIL. That is something that we very much have agreed with Turkey about. We've discussed this in quite, uh, quite depth with them. You've got this area now which is being described as a safe area. I realize that that's not a technical term. I realize the United States is not calling it a no-fly zone. Do you think that this area will de facto become somewhere where the moderate opposition forces can go and be trained and equipped and sent out into the fight, which is against ISIS and Assad? Well, Christian, there's about a, really about a 90-kilometer stretch of border that ISIL is controlling, uh, the northern Syria border with Turkey that ISIL is controlling, that it is in our mutual interests, and Turkey's very concerned about that. So we're looking at a number of ways uh, to help clear ISIL from that border region. Of course, uh, flying missions out of Turkey will help because we'll be able to strike those targets with great effect. Um, but how we coordinate with the moderate opposition groups on the ground and how we do that, how we maneuver, is something that we still have to work out with Turkey, but we're going to be sitting down with them in the very near future uh, and we'll try to work out those details. As you know, the Turkish military is also attacking various Kurdish groups. Uh, what is your reaction to that as the United States government, but also these have been the people, the boots on the ground, that have done some of the biggest fighting against ISIS. Well, I think it's very important to step back and kind of look at what happened. We actually reached the agreement uh, with Turkey about, you know, 10 days or so ago. Um, shortly before our two presidents spoke, the PKK launched a number of, of attacks inside Turkey and killed a number of Turkish uh, police officers and soldiers. Uh, the PKK from northern Iraq took credit for those attacks. They promised more attacks. And when such a thing happens, um, our ally, Turkey, um, has a right to respond. But we've also, uh, Christian, we've called for de-escalation uh, from both uh, the Turkish government and the PKK. Uh, but most importantly, the PKK has to stop uh, these types of attacks in inside Turkish territory, which are totally unacceptable and which really distract from the common fight against uh, ISIL. And finally, the Prime Minister also said to me that had there been some kind of safe area in northern uh, Syria, then ISIS would not have been able to flourish. It was the atrocities of the Assad regime that created a vacuum that allowed ISIS. That's what he said to me. Do you agree with that, that you're a little bit late? You know, Christian, I think uh, the historians will sort out this period and what may have led to uh, from A to B to C. Um, what is really important is where we are right now. Uh, Turkey has declared that uh, they want to fight ISIL and get ISIL off of their border, and uh, we are very much going to help them. Uh, they have opened up their bases to our aircraft. Uh, we are working now through our DOD channels to begin that process. You might remember, Christian, uh, not long ago, really, about seven months ago or so, uh, ISIL was about to take the city of Kobani. And had they taken Kobani, the entire northern border of Syria uh, would have been controlled by ISIL. We made a decision, President Obama made a decision, to try to help the Syrian Kurds in Kobani fight back, where we agreed to open up uh, a, a corridor for Kurdish Peshmerga to bring heavy weapons into Kobani. And, you know, the history now, uh, you can see what has happened. The Syrian Kurds not only held Kobani, they defeated ISIL uh, quite massively there. So I can't really, it's hard to overemphasize how complicated this is, um, but, you know, we're all partners here. We're all in constant communication. 
and we'll be, uh, we look forward to really continuing these very good discussions we've had with the Turks over recent weeks, and those will continue over the coming days. Brett McGurk, thank you very much for joining me from the State Department. Thank you, Christiane. Thanks so much.